Welcome to History Medieval, where we immerse ourselves in the diverse and frequently turbulent narrative of the medieval era. In this episode, we're examining a crucial event in European history, the Battle of Eddington, which occurred sometime between the 6th and 12th of May, 878 C. This story begins not with a battle, but with the ominous harbingers of war. Let's rewind to the years between 786 and 802, in the Kingdom of Wessex. The scene, the coastal lands of Portland, where the first Viking raid on Anglo-Saxon soil is about to unfold. Imagine the shock and confusion as three Norse ships appear on the horizon, their sails like dark wings against the sky. These were no ordinary visitors, their arrival marked the beginning of an era of raids and conquests. In a brutal show of force, these Norsemen, invaders from the cold north, struck down King Beatrix Reeve, signaling the start of a dark chapter in English history. But the tale of Viking incursions stretches beyond Wessex. Journey with me to the north, to the holy island of Lindisfarne in Northumbria. The year is 793, a year marked by dire omens and fearful wonders. The Anglo-Saxon chronicle tells of whirlwinds, lightning, and fiery dragons in the sky, signs of impending doom. And indeed, doom came with the sacking of Lindisfarne, a sacred site ravaged through rapine and slaughter. This was only the beginning. For years, Viking raids continued, sporadic at first, but growing in frequency and ferocity by the 830s. Each assault, each pillage, each conquest, carved deeper wounds into the land and its people. By the mid-9th century, a fearsome force emerged, known to the Saxons as the Great Heathen Army. Commanded by the legendary brothers Eva the Boneless, Ubba, and Halfdan Ragnarsson, this army was unlike any other. Its purpose was not merely to raid but to conquer and reside. The kingdoms of Northumbria and East Anglia fell, one after another, under the relentless Viking tide. By 871, Wessex itself was under threat. Alfred the Great, succeeding his brother Ethelred, who died after the Battle of Merton, faced a seemingly insurmountable challenge. The Viking onslaught had pushed the kingdom to the brink of collapse. By 874, Mercia's fall disrupted the great heathen army's unity. Halfdan retreated to Northumbria, contending with Picts and Strathclyde Welsh to secure his realm. His forces, trading warfare for farming, settled the land, vanishing from history post-876, their conquests replaced by cultivation. Guthrum, aided by two enigmatic kings, retreated to East Anglia's marshlands near Cambridge. Starting in 875, he eyed Wessex, initiating repeated attacks. His persistent campaign, displaying strategic skill, almost captured King Alfred in his Chippenham Winter Fortress. This period was defined by such power struggles and the resilience of kings and warriors. As we approach the climactic Battle of Eddington, we find Alfred, having spent a winter in the marshes of Athelney, rising from adversity to summon his West Saxon forces. The stage is set for a confrontation that would echo through the ages, Alfred the Great versus Guthrum, leader of the Danes, at Eddington. In this monumental clash, the fate of England hung in the balance. It was a battle not just for land, but for the very soul and future of a nation. In the early days of May, a crucial moment in English history unfolds. King Alfred the Great, rallying his forces, gathers an impressive army of 4,000 to 6,000 men from Somerset, Wiltshire, and Hampshire. Their rendezvous point, the legendary Egbert's Stone, hidden within the eastern parts of Selwood Forest. The air is thick with anticipation as they prepare for a significant confrontation. As dawn breaks, Alfred leads his army north, their spirits high in their armor gleaming in the morning light. Their destination, the town of Chippenham, but fate had other plans. At Eddington, they clash with the full might of the Viking army. A brutal shield wall battle ensues, characterized by the clash of steel and the cries of warriors. 
The battle, shrouded in mystery, is long and arduous, but eventually, Alfred emerges victorious. In the aftermath, Alfred's forces pursue the retreating Vikings, cutting them down all the way to their stronghold. They seize livestock and lay siege to the Viking compound, a relentless assault that lasts two weeks. Trapped and driven to despair by hunger and fear, the Vikings within the fortress finally seek terms of surrender. A pivotal moment in the conflict. Alfred's triumph is sealed not just by the Vikings' unconditional surrender, but also by their leader Guthrum's agreement to convert to Christianity. Baptized with Alfred as his sponsor, Guthrum adopts the Christian name Athelstan. Under the Treaty of Wedmore, the now-converted Guthrum is bound to leave Wessex. Thus, in 879, the Viking army departs Chippenham, marking a significant shift in the course of English history. The Battle of Eddington and its aftermath didn't just reshape the landscape of Wessex, it marked a turning point in the Viking Age, a testament to Alfred's resolve and strategic brilliance. Thank you so much for watching our journey through the fascinating medieval world and the many intriguing, yet often overlooked, chapters of history. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into history's captivating stories. We'd love for you to be part of our medieval community discussions, so feel free to join our channels, the links are right down in the description. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.